Hey, Carl here with Columbia Water Gardens. I want to give you guys a pro tip. This is only going to take a second, but one of the things that um, if you've built any decent sized waterfalls before, one of the things that you're going to come across is, uh, is foam. I like to use uh, the Aquascape Pro foam sealant. The reason why I like to use this, big can, easy to use trigger. You can control and dial in the flow. Uh, the little handy uh, cans that you can get over at your hardware store, those are cute for one uh, time applications, but when you're doing professional work, you want to use an actual foam gun. The other thing I like to use is just a little cheap disposable ones. These guys here are so much less expensive than buying the big ones with the dial because to be honest with you, they just don't last that long. Um, this guy here, a couple months old, but um, here's the real tip is this. If you look down here, I've got a decent sized gap that I need to fill. Now, one way that you can fill a gap of this size here is you can just start foaming. The problem with that is, is that you'll see that foam from the front of the waterfall on this side over here, and we don't want that. So right now this rock is leveled off perfectly. It's gonna make a really good spillway sound. But one of the things I like to do is I'll just take a piece of leftover underlayment, fold it up nicely, and check this out. If I take this, and if I just gently tuck it into that spot there, then I can still foam this in and still get a really good foam seal all the way around this and come into this crack over here. But the important thing is, is that it's not visible underneath here where this crack is. So this is just a really cool thing that you can do. So go ahead and check this out. I'm just gonna kind of lay down a really nice, easy foam bead inside here. Now, less is more when you're using waterfall foam um, because it is gonna expand. And this area right over here, when I'm done with it, I'm gonna kinda smash it into place a little bit, add some gravel into this area. Maybe just give it a little bit of a shot inside this hole right over here. And that's it for right now. One other thing I wanna do is I wanna kinda of check my leading edge of the liner. This is all backfilled really tight with sand behind here. There's actually about a good four to six inches of sand behind all of these rocks here. I've got this one over here that's also gonna bleed. Give this a little bit of a shot. There we go, fill that gap up. That's nice. This guy's good. Let's get a little bit inside that foam, the inside that foam. So what Aaron and I have done here is um, we've created a really cool double spillway. Water's gonna come over the front of this guy over here, and it's also gonna come around over here, and he's also going to come off the front of this stone over here. The top of this stone here is perfectly level with the top of this stone here, and the way we know that is because we used our laser transit, and we got solid tone on the front of both of these spillways. So the other issue is, is watching the back of these spillways here as well, as this area here fills up. So when you're running a double, a double spillway, it's really complicated. It's very accurate work. You've got to make sure this is level with the back and you want to get the front level with each other and the desired effect is going to be able to work really well. One last tip, um, water flows at the rate of 100 gallons per hour per horizontal inch. So let me grab my, my measuring stick and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So this is a stick off my transit and the width of this spillway here is just a little bit over a foot. So we'll call that 14 inches right over here, okay? And then the width of this spillway is, what is that, uh, 22 inches. So 14 and 22, 22, 36 inches. Well, we have a total of 5,000 gallons per hour. It's actually 5,500 gallons per hour that's gonna be spilling over these two rocks. And what that means is, is that at 100 gallons per hour per horizontal inch, that also gives you about a quarter of an inch of flow coming over the top of that lip. So what that tells us is, is that when we turn on this pump at 5,000 gallons per hour, we have more than enough flow to be able to handle both of these spillways and to be able to get a nice solid drop. 
So finally, the last effect that we're looking for is to come off this jagged edge and kick out and down over here. We have a pocket light that's hidden back over here. But this one over here, we want it to hug the face of this rock over here. And as it hugs, it's going to kick down right into this little pocket right over here where we have another pocket light over here. So these are the little attention to detail things that, that you really want to kind of slow your project down a little bit so that you don't miss. Um, as a professional, we can usually jam through this stuff really fast. I think actually the thing that's costing us the most amount of time is this video. So if you want to see more of me, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you'll see more tips just like this right out here in the field. And I really appreciate you leaving your feedback. We respond to all of those as well. And if you're seeing this video in social media through Instagram or through Facebook, please be sure to leave your comments and share this video as well. I'm Carl with Columbia Water Guards reminding you that foam matters. Happy ponding.